Hello everyone, this is Melissa Parker and welcome to Clinical Math Tutoring. Today we'll be discussing some of the different types of calculations that will be needed for your clinical math exams. The problems that are in this uh, tutoring session will include problems from Module 2, 3, and 4. Um, so in Module 2, students are expected to know conversion, so things like pounds to kilograms, kilograms to pounds, military to standard time, and standard time to military time. You should be able to read medication labels, you should be able to calculate dosages that need to be given, and you should be able to calculate a dose by a patient's weight. For Module 3, you're going to be doing conversions as well, so you might be doing some metric conversions. You might That might include pounds to kilograms, kilograms to pounds, military to standard time, standard to military time. You're going to need to be able to read medication labels and then calculate dosages to be given. Calculate the dosages based on the weight, different types of insulin, so you need to know the names of, of the rapid acting, um, regular acting, or excuse me, uh, rapid and uh, short acting and uh, intermediate and long acting insulin and you need to know those by names. Also you should be able to read an insulin sliding scale and you need to know how to read a label, um, know the amount to administer that's on a syringe. So you might have a picture of a syringe and after you calculate the dosage, you might need to be able to recognize which syringe has the correct amount in it as far as insulin. And remember with insulin too, you have to pay attention to the type of syringe. So if the problem says that it is a 50U, then you need to use a 50U syringe. If it says 100U, you need to use a 100U syringe. So make sure you're, using, you're picking the correct syringe. Also for mod four, you're going to need to know your conversions. So again, your metric conversions, your pounds to kilograms, kilograms to pounds, your military to standard time, and your standard to military time. You're also going to have to calculate intravenous calculations. So you'll need to know the IV flow rate and IV drip factors and how to calculate IV drips. You need to be able to read medication labels. You need to be able to calculate the dosages that need to be given. You need to be able to calculate a dosage based on weight. So that means you need to know the recommended minimum and maximum daily dose for a patient. And then you need to know if the dosage is safe to give or not. Um, you also need to know how to read um, labels and the amount to be administered on a syringe. And you need to be able to compare uh, percentages of a solution, ointment, or a cream. Um, so you should be able to recognize which one um, is the weakest strength and which one is the strongest strength in relation to percentages. Let's talk a little bit more about the key important information regarding your clinical math exams. The clinical math exam must be completed on the first day of clinical. The exam will be taken at home at the provided time or with your clinical instructor at the site. Students will have three attempts to take their clinical math exam. Students who do not pass their math exam are not allowed to participate in medication administration during clinical. Students that do not pass their clinical math exam by the third attempt will be dropped from the program. Always include your units in your answer, even if the unit is already given and only round if directed to in a problem. Read your directions carefully. Some of the most common mistakes that we recognize when we're grading the exams is that students are not reading the directions carefully. Um, some of the directions may say to round to the nearest whole number. Some may say to round to the nearest tenth, and they get the answer wrong because they did not round correctly. The other common problem is that students do not include the units in their answer. So even in the fillable area, if it says, or the question says, how many units will you give? And let's say the answer is 12, you would need to put 12 units, even though the question says, how many units would you give? Um, it's better to put it there than to not have it there. Um, it will be marked wrong uh, if the unit is not available and partial credit will not be given. First, we'll cover basic dosage calculations. So for this calculation, we have an order of Risperidol 1 milligram POBID. How many tablets will be needed per dose? So there's different ways to solve this problem. A lot of students like to use the order over your availability times your quantity to get your answer. So here's our order. 
and this is what we have available. So our order is one milligram. And then our availability right, is 0 0.5 milligrams. And the quantity is one tablet, because this is per tab that we're giving 0 0.5 milligrams, so one tab. Then if you divide the one milligram by the 0 0.5, you end up with two tablets. So this is using the equation problem. So remember, if you're using an equation problem, you have to make sure that the units are in the same unit, right? This has to be milligrams, this has to be milligrams. So the equation problem wouldn't work if one of them was micrograms and the other one was milligrams. You would have to convert it first. You can also do your dimensional analysis where you look for what you're solving for, right? So we need to figure out how many tabs we're gonna give the patient. So one tab, so remember with dimensional analysis, whatever you're solving for needs to go in the numerator right here. So one tab is 0 0.5 milligrams. And if you divide, oops, sorry. First, you need to also um, say what your order is. So we know that one tab is 0 0.5 milligrams, and then we're going to give one milligram. And then you just put one here to hold a place value. And then you can cancel out your like units, so your milligrams over your milligrams. Then you're going to multiply the top across, so you have one. Then you're going to multiply the bottom across, so you have 0 0.5. And then your answer is still two tabs. Okay, so for this problem, still a basic medication dosage calculation. Um, so we can use our equation problem, which is order of availability times the volume because we're dealing with a liquid solution now. So our order is 360 milligrams by mouth every four hours as needed. And um, what we have available is 160 milligrams per 5 ml. So for every 5 ml, that patient would have 160 milligrams of the medication. So let's go ahead and try to solve this with using this equation. So our order is 360 milligrams. What we have available is 160 milligrams times 5 ml. And then you're going to divide your 360 by your 160 and multiply that times 5. You get 11.25 mLs. Um, so remember, you, you don't want to forget to round to the nearest whole number here, right? So, um, or no, yeah, round to the nearest whole number. So you would need to make sure that you're rounding to the ones place. So the amount that you're going to give is 11 mLs. All right, so for those that like dimensional analysis, right, we need to look at what we're solving for. We need to figure out how many mLs to give. And remember, even if the question says, how many mLs are you going to administer or how many is needed, you need to include the units in your answer, okay? So with dimensional analysis, you're going to uh, have to put what you're solving for and then whatever is in the numerator on the other side of the equal sign needs to be ml. So you have 5 mls over 160 milligrams and then we need to write whatever the unit is here. We want it to be across so that we can cancel it out. So 300 milligrams and we're just putting one there to hold the place value. So you can cross out the like units then you can multiply the top across you end up with 1800 you multiply the bottom across, you end up with 160. And if you divide 1800 by 160, you still end up with 11.25 mLs. And remember, we have to round to the nearest whole number, so it's 11 mLs. So this is another basic medication dosage calculation, which we can use the order of the availability times volume because it is a liquid medication. Um, so here we have an order for thymine hydrochloride 
125 milligrams IM every day, and how many mLs are we going to administer? So again, we can use our equation, order of availability times our volume. So our order is 125 milligrams. And then sometimes students get confused by this because there's two different conversions here, but basically it's the same thing. 100 milligrams per mL, um, if you give 200, it's two mL, it's just a ratio, right? So um, it's still the same. So just pick whichever one you wanna use. Like if I was gonna choose, I would pick this because then I don't really have to multiply my volume by anything. So you can put your 100 here, milligrams times it's one ml because you don't really have anything extra that you need to um, add there since it's 100 over one ml all right um so then you take your 125 and you divide it by 100 so if you do that you get 1.25 ml and if you are a dimensional analysis person right we're still solving for mls so we can look right here and you're going to have one ml over 100 milligrams and then what do we need to give is 125 milligrams and again when i put my one here it's just to hold the place value and then remember whatever unit is down here it needs to be up here so that we can cancel it out then you're going to multiply across the top you have 125 and then you're going to multiply the bottom you have 100 and then you can divide these together um, there's a little trick if you want to learn it, but you can count how many zeros you have, one, two, and then take your decimal spot and move it to the left, one, two, because I'm dividing so that it should get smaller. And then your answer is 1.25 ml. And make sure you include your units so you don't get it wrong. Now I just want to show you guys something really quick, okay? So even if I used pick a different color so you don't get confused let's say I'm still using my 125 but I'm going to go ahead and use my 200 milligrams you can do that you just need to make sure you put two mls right here and then if you divide 125 by 200 and then you multiply that times two you still end up with one point oops 1.25 ml okay so with this uh, calculation you need to make sure you can read the labels so we have an order of epinephrine 0 0.75 milligrams IV stat so we need to get that right now how many mls will you administer and we need to round to the nearest tenth so we have to make sure that when we're done we round to the nearest tenth because sometimes if it's multiple choice, they will have the correct answer before it's rounded to the nearest tenth, and they'll have the answer that where it's rounded to the nearest tenth. And so if you don't pay attention to the instructions, you're going to get it wrong. Um, so here we can still use our order over our availability times our volume. So we have an order of 0 0.75 milligrams, and what we have available is one milligram and it's for every ml okay so don't get confused by this this is just a ratio um, for that um, we can use this right here to solve for the problem so if you take um, 0 0.75 and you divide that by 1 you and you multiply that by 1 then you end up with 0 0.75 mls now let's say a says um, 75 mls, B says 0 0.75 mls, C says 8 mls, and D says 0 0.8 mls. So we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So this is what I was trying to tell you, that if you forget to round this, that answer might be there, but you're going to get it wrong if you do that because it's telling you you need to round to the nearest tenth. So we're rounding to the nearest tenth, right? It's actually 0 0.8 mLs. So make sure you don't forget to do that when you're doing your problem. Now, if you're a dimensional analysis person, right, we're solving for mL, so 1 mL and 1 milligram. And then here we're going to give 0 0.75 milligrams. 
over 1. And then we're going to cancel out our like unit. And then you're going to multiply the top across. So you have 0 0.75. Multiply the bottom. Then you end up with 0 0.75. Then we cannot forget that we have to round to the nearest tenth, right? So this is my tenth spot. So I'm looking at the number here to determine if I'm going to round. And then my answer is 0 0.8 mLs. Okay, so this problem right here has a lot of distractions in it. Um, the order is 40 MEQ, and we need to figure out how many mLs are in here. So potassium chloride, 40 MEQ IV, and 1,000 mLs of 0.9% normal saline. How many mLs of medication is needed? So really, we just need to know what 40 mL equivalence is going to be in. This is a distraction, and this is a distraction. We don't really care about that for this particular problem. And then this is what's available. This tells you the concentration that is in this bottle. Don't pay attention to the 30 mLs. So basically you have like a little bottle right here, right, of your potassium. And the total amount that's in the bottle is 30 mLs. We don't care about that. We just care about the concentration and how much we're going to need to pull. This is just telling you that in a bottle, that that whole bottle of 30 mLs has 60 mL equivalents of potassium in it. So again, we don't need that for this problem. So part of um, the tricky part about doing medication calculations is when you have all this information and you knowing what information you need to pull from the information that you have. So um, now I'm going to still use my order over availability times my volume. So my order is 40 MEQ. What I have available is 2 MEQ and it's per 1 ml. So if you divide 40 into 2, oops, I put 20, 2 MEQ. So you take 40 and divide it by 2 MEQ, then you write, then you will have 20 mLs. So the answer is 20 mLs. If you are a dimensional analysis person, we're solving for mLs. So looking at this problem, again, there's an ml here, but that's the distractor. I'm caring about the mLs that's here. So 1 ml has two mil equivalents in it and then this has to be mil equivalents up here so I can cancel it out that's where this 40 comes in the one is just holding the place value you can cancel your units out then you will end up with 40 over 2 and then if you divide that you end up with 20 ml Number one says order, Clauseril 75 milligrams PO daily. How many tablets will you administer per day? So our order is Clauseril 75 milligrams PO daily. So the patient's only taking this one time a day. And how many tablets are we going to administer per day? So we can do our order over our availability times our quantity. And our order is 75 milligrams, and our availability is 25 milligrams, and it's per tab. Um, so if we take 75 divided by 25, you end up with 3 times 1 is 3 tablets. So the answer would be 3 tablets or 3 tabs daily. So even though this says how many tablets will you administer per day, I still need to include my units in my answer. Then the next uh, question says, order Clauseril 75 milligrams PO daily. How many tablets will we, will we need for seven days? Okay, so um, you can do two things, right? You, can, you know that you're giving three tablets per day, right? And you're going to give that for seven days. So you could just multiply that times seven, and you'll need 21 tablets. If you're a dimensional analysis person like me, you're solving for how many tabs you're going to need. So three tabs per day, and we're giving it for, um, excuse me, we're giving it for seven days. And then you're gonna multiply the top across, which is 21, one times one, which is one. So 21 tablets. Okay, so this is a weight-based calculation medication. Um, so the order is Keflex 150 milligrams PO every six hours, um, which makes sense because this says that it's four divided dosages, right? So 
I'm giving it every six hours, I'm going to give it four times a day. And then it says, what is the recommended dosage in milligrams per kilogram per day? So here it's 25, oops, let's not use red, uh, 25 to 50 milligrams per kilogram per day in four divided dosages. So that's your answer to this problem right here. 25 to 50 milligrams per kilogram per day in four divided dosages. And then it says, what is the safe range? So we know the minimum amount is 25 milligrams per kilogram. And then the maximum is 50 milligrams per kilogram. And then again, that's per day. Okay, so per day, per day. All right, so we have the patient's weight, but it's in pounds. This is in kilograms, so I have to do conversion to make sure they're the same. So take your 60, right, and to figure out kilograms, because uh, my number should go down when I'm doing when I'm converting from, from pounds to kilograms. So I'm going to divide by the 2.2, and if you do that, you get 27.27 or 27.3 kilograms. So now you're going to plug in. To this problem to find the minimum okay so you take 25 and you multiply that times 27.3 and you have 682.5 milligrams per day for 50 you take the 50 times 27.3 and you have 1,365 milligrams per day. So now when it's saying what is the safe dose range, right, we can give the minimum amount of 682.5 milligrams up to 1,365 milligrams per day for this patient. So this lower dose is the minimum and then the higher dose the 1365 milligrams is the maximum so in between these numbers is safe right so if the doctor ordered 700 milligrams it's safe but if the doctor ordered 500 milligrams right it's below the 682 minimum so that's not enough medication if the doctor ordered 1500 milligrams well, the maximum dose is 1,365, so that would be too much. So now to determine if it's safe, I have to look at what the doctor ordered over here, right? So now we're using this. So remember that, that these amounts that are right here, that's per day, and this is a per dose. So to figure out per dosage, I have to divide the minimum amount and the maximum amount by four okay so if i take because it's in four divided doses if i take 682.5 and i divide that by four then that's 170 milligrams mercury or milligrams mercury 170 uh, milligrams for the patient um, per dose okay let me just check my math one more time 682 i always do it twice just to be on the safe side yeah, so that would be 170 milligrams. This is the minimum. And then if I take my 1,365 and divide that by 4, then that's 341.25 milligrams. We're just going to round it here. So the doctor ordered 150, but the minimum amount is 170 milligrams. So this number right here is too low, okay? So is it safe? No, but I always call the doctor just to verify. That's why we always check things in our drug book because there may be a reason why the doctor lowered the dosage. Maybe the patient has a kidney or a liver issue and so they need to lower the dosage so it's safe for them. So there's there may be some times where the physician is going to change the dosage based on the patient's needs. So you would still want to get clarification from the provider, but for you doing the math problem, it's not safe when you did your calculations, so you would call to check.
So the answer is no for your clinical math exam. Okay, so for intake and output, um, the beginning part says the client receives intravenous fluid at 150 mLs per hour from 630 to 1330. So first we need to figure out how long this is, right? So I always start with 630 and then I say to 730. So 630 to 730 is one hour. 7.30 to 8.30 is the second hour. 8.30 to 9.30 is the third. 9.30 to 10.30 is the fourth. 10.30 to 11.30 is the fifth. 11.30 to 12.30 is the sixth. And 12.30 to 13.30 is the seventh. So this is seven hours that the IV is inf infusing. Um, here it's just one hour, okay? so. That for every hour, the patient's getting 85 ml. So that one I can kind of do in my head, right? They're going to have 85 ml there. But here, for every hour, the patient's getting 150. So I have to multiply that times 7 to figure out what it is, right? So 150 times 7 is 1,050 mLs. And then you're going to add that to the 85 mLs, which is 1,355, or excuse me, 1,000. 135 mLs. Sorry, I can't talk today. Um, so that counts as part of the intake, but we're going to save that as the total dosage for the day. Then for the output, right, the patient had their fully emptied of a 725 mLs of urine and they had their surgical drain uh, emptied with 75 mLs. So if you take some, 725 plus 75, and then you have 800 mLs. And again, this is going to count for your total output, okay? Now let's look at breakfast. So if it's asking specifically what you're having for breakfast, we only care about what's in here, okay? So this tell is just in there to give you a hint, so don't let this 8 ounce throw you off because they only are drinking half of that, okay? So half of eight ounces is four ounces, is four ounces. And for every ounce, right, so one ounce is equal to 30 ml. So for every ounce is 30 ml. So I can just multiply this four times 30 to get my answer, and I have 120 mLs. We don't care about the apple. We don't care about the two pieces of toast. Okay, so the total amount for breakfast was 120 mLs. Okay, for lunch, uh, the patient drank a whole can of ginger ale, so it's 12 ounces. So again, for every ounce, it's 30 mLs. So I can take 12 and multiply that times 30 and end up, end up with 360 mLs. We don't care about the chicken sandwich. This has ounces in it, but it's not a liquid, so I don't care about it. Anything that melts at room temperature, we do care about. So for, they had three ounces of ice cream, so three ounces. And remember, for every ounce, it's 30 mLs. You're going to multiply that times 30, then you have 90 mLs. So for lunch, you have to count, you have to add that up. You have to add that 360 plus the 90, right? So for lunch, they had 450 mLs. Now, um, in the clinical math exam, it might just be a white box that you have to fill in, and above it might be a question that says, how many mLs did the patient drink for breakfast? Remember, if it's just the white box and it doesn't have something like this at the end, you have to include the units or it'll be marked wrong. That's where people miss a lot in this particular problem is they forget to put the units in. I will not mark you wrong if you put it there and it's already there, but I will mark it wrong if it's not there. Okay, so if you're when in doubt, just write it out to make sure that you have yourself covered. All right, now for dinner, it says that they had um, a glass of juice, which is eight ounces. So remember for every ounce, it's 30 ml. So I can multiply that times 30, you have 240. We don't care about the hot dog with bun. This is going to melt into a liquid at room temperature. So they had four ounces, and every ounce is 30 ml. So we're going to multiply it times 30, and we have 120. Okay. Um, so I forgot to. Um, oh no, I did put the lunch in. Okay. So now let's add for dinner. So 240 plus 120 is 300. 
and 60 mLs. All right, now it's saying for the total intake. So that means <clears throat> I have to include my intake here. I have to include this, this, and this for this problem right here. Okay, so we're going to take 1,135 plus 120 plus 450 plus 360. And my answer is 2,065. Now, I always double check. So again, 1,135 plus 120 plus 450 plus 360. And then if I get the same answer again, then I usually feel confident that I didn't mess anything up while I was trying to type it out. Now for the total output, right, um, the total output is right here. So I can just plug it in. I don't have to worry about um, the menu because it doesn't have any information in there that I needed. However, if the patient vomited or something, then we'd want to include that. So here, oops, I forgot to change it to pen. Here, this is your 800 mLs. This problem is, is an example of reading a sliding scale. Um, so it says you have performed a finger stick on your patient and the glucometer reads 205 um, for the patient's um, blood sugar. So 205 milligrams per deciliter. So use the sliding scale to give the correct amount of insulin. So um, this right here is kind of like your guide, right? You have to find where this number falls on this chart so it's 205 so 205 falls in between here right so in between 191 to 230 is where 205 falls so that means that i'm going to give 13 units of insulin to this patient to cover them so this problem is checking to see if you know how to read the labels that are given to you so it says how many mls of dilute int are recommended for reconstitution. So you have to look to see how many you're going to need. So if you read right here, it says tap the bottle until all powder flows freely, add approximately one third amount of the water constitution, reconstitution, and then shake vigorously uh, to the wet powder. So if you look, it tells you you have to add 78 mLs. So the answer here would be 78 mLs. And then it says, how many mLs will the bottle contain after reconstitution? So if you look right here, it says when reconstituted, right? When reconstituted, it has 100 mLs. So the answer is 100 mLs. How many mLs will you administer per dose? So that's where this comes in. We have to look at the order, right? And we're dealing with the volume, so it's order over availability times your volume. So then we're looking at this right here to see uh, how much we need to give for the patient, okay? So the order is 500 milligrams, right? If you look here, we're giving 500 milligrams. And what we have available is 125 milligrams in every 5 ml. So for every volume of 5 ml, we have 125 milligrams. Now we're going to take the 500 and divide it by 125 and then multiply that times the 5 and you get 20 mls. So you would administer 20 mls of the medication. This right here is just an example, and you should go back to your books, your fundamentals books, and look up your insulin and look at the different names of the insulins um, or your farm book to see what the insulins are. But you should recognize that if you saw a picture of Novolog or Humalog, you would know that that is a rapid acting. Um, if you saw Lispro or Regular, you would know that that's short acting. If you saw NPH or Humulin or Novelin, you know that that's intermediate acting. Um, or excuse me, Humulin N, then you would know that that's intermediate acting. If you saw Humulin 70-30 um, or 70% NPH and 30% regular, then you would know that that's a pre-mixed NPH or a regular insulin. There's also long acting insulins as well. So you need to make sure you know the different names. So 
always go back to your farm books or your fundamentals books to look for that information. Um, this is not a module two question. Students sometimes struggle to identify how much volume is in the syringe. So we're not looking at the top here as to how much is in there. We're actually looking at the side here to see how much is in the syringe. Um, so my examples, because you might see a problem that looks very similar to this, right? And you can't really see the graduation or the lines right here, but you can still figure it out because looking at this, you know that each one of these lines represents a numeric value of one. Um, so if you have 25 right here, then you can count backwards, 25, 24, 23, 22. So then you know there's 22 ml. So there's a trick to it. If you can't see the graduated lines here, then just count backwards and that will help you out. Also remember I told you that you have to be careful of the syringe that you pick, especially insulin. If it says U100 in the order, then you want to make sure that your syringe says U100. Or if it says U50, you want to make sure that the syringe that you pick is U50. Okay, so here's a heparin calculation. Sometimes people get a little um, nervous because they see this high number and it's in a different measurement, right? It's in units instead of milligrams or micrograms, but it's still the same. You're still going to do your order over your availability times your volume for this, okay? Um, so your order is, if you read it, heparin, 5,000 units subcutaneously daily, how many mLs will you administer? So we have our 5,000 units divided by your 30,000 units, and that's for every 30 mLs. A lot of times when we're calculating liquid, students forget to add this. And so your problem will be wrong if you don't. So make sure you add that into your problem. So in your calculator, you're going to put 5,000, hit the divide button, then put 30,000, and then you're going to hit the equal button, and then you're going to multiply that times 30. So you get 5 ml. Now, if you're a dimensional analysis person, you can still solve this way. So you're going to have 1 ml. So we know that for 30 mLs, there's 30,000 units. We're going to give 5,000 units. You can cancel out these units. We're going to multiply the top across. So 30 times 5,000, you get 150,000. Then you're going to multiply the bottom across. So that's 30,000. So you're going to divide the 150,000 by the 30,000. And you still get 5 ml. So like I said, just pick whichever way works for you and stick with it and do it that way. Okay, so this problem is one of the drip factor problems. So let's look at the order. The order is for Tagamet 500 milligrams IV piggyback every eight hours. The medication has been added to 100 mLs of D5W to infuse over 30 minutes, and the drop factor is 10 drops per mL, and we need to round to the nearest whole number. Um, so how many milliliters of medication must be added to the D5 um, IV solution? So the first thing that we have to solve is how much medication we're going to need from this to add to this 100 ml bag uh, for the patient, okay? Um, so the order is 500 milligrams. What we have on hand right, is right here, right? It's right here. So we have 300 milligrams in two ml. So I'm just using that order over availability times volume here, okay? Then you take your 500 and put it in your calculator and divide that by 300. Then you're gonna multiply that times two and you get 3.3333333, okay? So um, your calculating with confidence book says that if this number is less than 10 mLs, you really don't have to count it in the total volume. So but this problem right here is telling you that you're going to add this into a hundred into a hundred ml bag. That's what it's trying to tell you. Now, um, good practice would be that you would count for 
every uh, ML that you give your patient, especially in a pediatric patient. So I'm going, I will let you do either way. You can follow the book less than 10, you could waive it or you can add it. I add it because I'm a peds nurse and it's important for peds. Um, sometimes there's also weight-based medications like heparin that you have to be super specific when. So it's just super specific with the volume. So I just feel like it's best practice to, um, to do that. So I'm gonna show you how to add it in when we solve for the math problem, okay? So now to do, so we know that this is, oops, still on highlighter, hold on. Okay, so we know that we're going to add, I'm just going to do 3ml to make it uh, easy. Okay, so we're solving for drops per minute. Okay, that's what we need to solve for. Um, so I know my drop factor is 10 drops per ml. And when I'm solving this, I want whatever is in the numerator here to be in the numerator here. I don't really care about what's in the denominator. I just only care about what's in the numerator. So this 10 drops per ml is important. Okay, so we're going to write, oops, I'm still in my highlighter. Let me change to my pen. Sorry, guys. So 10 drops per ml. And then whatever is in this numerator, or sorry, yeah, numerator, then, no, I'm talking backwards today. Whatever is in this denominator, there we go, is going to be in the numerator here because we want to be able to cancel those out. I'm having technical difficulties, sorry. It's really user error, but we'll pretend like it's not. All right, so uh, now I need to find what ML is. So this is where this comes in. But remember, we have to add this medication because we're adding that 500 milligrams. This 3.3 mLs is what has the 500 medications in, and 500 milligrams of the medication in it, and we're going to add that to this bag. So really, it's 103 mls and it's going to infuse for 30 minutes okay now when i want to solve for my problem then you just cancel out your like units um the way that i always check to make sure that i solved my problem correctly is whatever's in the numerator here when i look on the opposite side of the equal sign i should have the same thing on this side so whatever's in the numerator here should be on the numerators here so we do we have drops because we already canceled out mls so it's the same and then here now we're going to look to make sure that it's the same on this side and the same on this side which it is so we have drops right we have uh, the drops per minute here so it's and it's drops per minute here. So since they're both in the proper place, the drops is in the numerator, the minutes is in the denominator, and it's the same on both of the equal sign, I know that I set it up properly. Now you're gonna multiply this across right here. So 10 times 103 is 1,030 ml. And then 1 ml times 30 is 30. So you're going to divide that by 30. So you end up with 34.33333333. But remember, this says round to the nearest whole number. Okay. So this one right here, really, it's going to be 34. Okay. And it's 34 drops per minute. Okay. Um, so that would be your answer. Now, uh, sometimes you might end up with a, with your answer being something like 35.66666 and it says to round to the nearest whole number. Um, if you're doing basic math, right, you would really go up to 36 drops per minute. However, again, this is me just teaching you to be a safe and best practice. 
would be to round down because if you're round, oh, I did, oh no, I did that right. If you round up, you're giving actually more than what the medication is prescribed. Um, and if you're rounding down, it's safer. So, you know, you're not giving more. So like in peds or medications that can really have serious effects, if you're not super careful, I would round down to 35 drops per minute, but um, follow what your instructor tells you to do. This problem here is one of our weight-based calculations. And in this problem, what you have to do is you have to find what the safest low dose is and what the safest or highest dose we can give that would still remain safe for the patient. So when we talk about minimum, that's the smallest amount we can give. When we talk about maximum, that's the highest amount we can give, right? So <clears throat> Here in this order, we have Tyker 5.5 grams, so this is in grams, for a client with a respiratory infection. The client weighs 220 pounds. Notice that the recommended dosage from the package insert for a respiratory tract infection is 200 to 300 milligrams per kilogram per day. Um, so that's important for you guys to recognize because if you look over here, in the section where it tells you the different types of um, bacteria that you can use as antibiotic to treat, there's different dosages based on whatever they are. So there's, if you look for urinary tract infection complications, that's very different than the respiratory tract uh, prescription. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at the correct dose. So this is the respiratory one right here, the 200 to 300 milligrams per kilogram per day, that's IV. Um, so when you're looking at this right here, this order, you have to remember that this is per dose. This order is per dose, okay? What they're giving you here is per day. So you're gonna need to remember that when you're trying to solve this problem. Um, the first thing that we need to do in order to solve this problem is to calculate the patient's weight in kilograms because the prescription or the order and also the dosage on the package is in kilograms. So we'll take the 220, right? And we're gonna divide that by uh, 2.2. So you would take 220, divide that by 2.2 and you would get 100 kilograms. So this patient weighs 100 kilograms. So now we have that in the proper unit. Um, so first we're gonna calculate what the minimum dosage is. So remember when we hear minimum, we're calculating the smallest amount, okay? So the smallest amount, if you look at this order right here is 200. We can give 200 milligrams per kilogram, right? So we know that this patient is 100 kilograms. So for every kilogram, that patient is going to get 200 milligrams. So you're gonna multiply that times 100, and you get 20,000 milligrams per day. Okay, remember this right here is per day. This order right here is per day. And remember this one right here, or excuse, yeah, this one's per dose, sorry, getting myself confused here. All right, so if we wanted to find out what the dosage is per dose, um, then we would have to, to divide the per day by however many times the doctor is ordering it, right? So if you look here, um, the doctor ordered it every six hours, and this is saying per day, but you can give it every four to six hours for this patient. But we're only gonna focus on the six hours, right? Because that's what the doctor is ordering here. Um, so remember to figure out how many times a day you're going to give your medication, you have to think of a 24 hour clock. If I'm giving it every six hours, that means I would give it four times a day. If I was giving it every four hours, I would give it six times a day. So. Those are things that you have to pay attention to when you're reading these problems. Okay, so the minimum dose for this client is 200, or excuse me, 20,000 milligrams per day. 
Okay, now let's look and see what's the maximum daily dose that we can give the patient. So the maximum is going to be 300 milligrams per kilogram. And remember the patient weighs 100 uh, kilograms. So this is 30,000 milligrams per day. So the maximum amount is 30,000 milligrams per day. Okay, now it's asking you if the dose is safe. So this is kind of where that per dose comes in. So for me to understand if this dosage right here is correct that the physician is prescribing, I have to calculate it. So one thing you have to pay attention to as well is that the order is in grams and the bottle is in milligrams. So for me to identify if it's a safe dose, I have to, I have to convert that 5.5 into the same unit, which is milligrams. So if you remember, to do that, there's 1,000 milligrams per kilogram, okay? So there's two ways you can do it. You can either just multiply the 5.5 times 1,000, or if you're one of those people where you have to see what it is, you can do dimensional analysis. So we're solving for milligrams. We know that there's 1,000 milligrams in a gram, and we're going to give 5.5 grams, and then we just put a one there to hold the place value. Um, and then remember my trick, if you count your zeros, one, two, three, then you can take your decimal and move it three spaces. One, two, three. So my safe dose is 5,500 milligrams per dose. So I have to multiply that times four, right? Because they're giving it every four hours to find out if it's safe. So the dosage is 22 thousand milligrams per day. That's what the doctor ordered. Now this is where students sometimes uh, get a little confused. So if you think of it like on a number line, right, if 20,000 milligrams is here and that's the smallest and 30,000 milligrams is up here and that's the maximum, what the doctor orders should fall in between this, right, for it to be safe. And the doctor did order 22,000 milligrams per day. So it is a safe dose. So the answer would be yes, it's a safe dose. Uh, thank you guys. And I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. And good luck on your clinical math exam.